Hi everyone, it's Glenn from Astrobloke. Welcome back. This is part two of uh, stacking videos. The first part, I'll put a link up here, which is stacking in PixInsight. Today's video is about Astro Pixel Processor. So, Joe from Joe's Astro Photo will be joining me. He showed me how to do stacking in PixInsight in the first video, and I'm now going to show him how to stack in Astro Pixel Processor. I think I've actually managed to sway him to move over to this program. I think he's found the way it works and the control you have a lot better. So, uh, that's a win for me, I think. But um, any questions you have about the videos, if there's anything that comes up or that something you're having a problem with, please let me know. I'll do everything I can to help you. Right, let's uh, have a look at this program. We'll have a look, and I'll show I'll show you I'll show you what what it's got, and then cool. uh, we Excited can see, see from it. there. Okay, bear with me. I'll just get it up. So, welcome to Astro Pixel Processor. So, um, cool. at the top here are all the stages for for stacking, um, and it goes naught to nine. There's not seven or eight. I think they've left some gaps for things that they can add later. Um, if you've got a one shot color you put your uh, basically your bio matrix of your camera in here if you've got an, an astro camera and if you're DSLR you just leave it as supported and the only other thing they've got is they've got a few algorithms for different filters so if you've got a dual, dual narrowband filter you can do HA color or you can actually extract HA and O3 and separate them completely so it gives you those options with That's one nice. shot color um, but as I say we're um, going to be using our, our mono cameras so under under load yeah. um we need to say it's a multi-channel filter processing so we'll leave that ticked but it's multi-session so if you've got more than one session you can uh, stack them in separate sessions but we're going to be just one session anything you hang over it will give you um information an information box to explain it so it's quite good for finding your way around so if i just put in here um and this is the uh I'm going to call it Joe's monkey head. I'm not insulting you, I promise. Um, <laughs> it was the monkey head that you, t <laughs> you took pictures of. Um, so within within uh, Astro Pixel Processor, you can see here you've got lights, and then you've got flats, darks, dark flats, bias, and then it's got the masters underneath with bad pixel map as well. So if you've got a bad pixel map made for your sensor, that can be loaded in all the time. If you nice. haven't got one, it'll automatically make you one. So if I run this and I haven't got one, oh, it'll make one. Nice. So if we start with the lights, and it's gone to the folder where I've got all of the information in, um, I can just highlight all of the hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. And it'll just say here, apply the filter header, or you can actually do them individually, but we're going to let it go with what the filters are and one of the things I like with this is it even puts it in little colors to help you out so hydrogen in red oh. oxygen in blue or the turquoisey and then dark red for your sulfur um, so it, it stacks really them in, cool. in like that and it tells me here how many lights as how many lights there are there we can then go to flats and again Oh, that's good. I've got no flats, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> hang, on, hang on a second. Yeah, I wonder what's happened there. Um, okay, I'll go and find my flats. I know where they are. I've, I've, I've got, I've got another file with them in. Bear with me. I'll go find my flats. Now, now, um, aren't you living in yeah. it? Yeah. There they are. So again. I, because it, that would that would be like for for Americans, for uh, the 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 name of that instead of flats would be house. 
houses. 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 Yeah, flats. <laughs> yeah. High rise. You call them high rises, don't you? <laughs> oh, I can't yeah, believe that we rises. call something okay. that's really tall and vertical a flat. It doesn't make sense, really, does it? But that's what we call them. So um, I've got three sets there that have gone in. And obviously I take 32 of each, so there's 96 in total, as you can see there. And if I scroll down, I can actually drag this up. It will give me a picture. And again, you can see it's got all the HA there, the O3 and the S2. Okay? Oh, nice. Okay. So it puts, puts it in lovely cool. little color blocks. So we can then go to dark flats. And again... I've got to go back to my original uh, my original folder here because I f didn't have any flats in there for whatever reason. So I want um, Joe's monkey head. <laughs> so under dark flats, again, I was going to select them all, open. Now, with dark flats, it will say all channels, but we don't want it on all channels. We want them on the specific channels. So again, we just apply the filter because with Nina... If I've made my flats, it'll automatically make my dark flats at the same time, so it matches them. And oh, they go in, yeah. and then I can scroll, I can even check them, so you've got flats, and then here, look, dark flats, and they're the HA, O3, and S2, okay? <laughs> so they're all in there, it's getting busy. That's really convenient, because it... Once you get used to that, you'll know right away I, if you I miss something. I think it's quite useful, and then finally I'm going to put my darks in. And again, I've got 32 of them. And that's going to be all channels, because you obviously you don't do darks per channel. So there will only be 32 right. of them. It's all there. And then from here... So, let yes. me ask you, Glenn. Well, well, when you're done, when this is done with all the individuals, will it make masters Yes, it'll make a master so of everything can... I'm making. So that'll automatically do that. So you could use yeah. the master darks. So up later. here is a very useful bit here with the... Uh, if I click on a, one of the lights, it will give me a linear uh, a, oh, a, nice. a, a sub to, to have a look at. And as you can see, there we've got the starburst on the side here. Now, um, one of the nice things with Astro Pixel Processor is you can just press integrate now, and it will just go through all the stages where it will analyze the stars, register the, the subs, um, it will calibrate the frames, it will normalize the lights, and it will integrate the lot into a stack. Um, but you can do each stage individually so you can check how it's going along so if you're worried that your integration files might not work what you can actually do is uh, run the calibration and then here we can actually look at the calibrated picture to make sure that those calibration frames have done what we want it to do to it which is a nice thing to do and then I, I, I do do wow. that sometimes and then That's I go nice. to the integration so if I go up to integrate here, you've got a few options. You can integrate per channel, integrate per channel and put them all together as one one, uh, one integration, or you can integrate them all together full stop. And you can do the same with the sessions. So if you've taken three sessions, you can make it, you can have three masters, one for each session, and then a fourth master of all the sessions put together. So it's got quite a lot of options there, which are quite nice. Um, so Very nice. what I would next do is just go to calibrate I would leave everything as standard and I would literally just calibrate mar um, reassign masters to lights and it would just go through a calibration so what I'll do Joe I'll do that now and then I'll show you what what, what it does to the uh, subs and how we can check them okay before I press that Joe what I'll do I'm just going to load in uh, what happens if you've got a master file? So if you've already built a yeah a master dark library, um, a nice thing with this, if you go back to the load screen, you can load in a master dark here. But if you were to call up a dark, let's say I clicked on dark, and I went into uh, my masters and I pick a master dark and I say open it'll go on all channels again it'll automatically know it's a master and you notice there it's put it in the master dark section oh that's so it, really it knows, slick it knows what you're putting really in there slick. anyway if i then go calibrate and i'm just going to push create masters and assign to lights okay if you've already got masters you can just reassign the masters to the lights much quicker 
but oh, nice. we're actually going to make them, so we're just going to let that run through. So, um, if you you could actually have this do it all on its own, but what you're doing is doing it uh, manually so that you can actually see or review your calibration uh, calibrated subs before yeah. you start them. If I'm right? happy and okay. I know that the calibration frames are good, um, I would literally just go straight to integrate and press integrate. And it would do this stage. It would just go through all the stages. If I'm not sure about my calibration frames or I want to check them first, then I calibrate. I'll do this calibration. Just check, make sure they're doing the job that they're meant to do. And then I'll jump to integrate. I rarely do any of the other stages unless I'm working on something like a mosaic. I may do that in stages because just oh, because okay. there's a lot of work there and... It, there's there's certain workflows you can go through to make it work better one of the things that works really well with app is you can chuck everything in for a mosaic and it will sort it all out for you but uh, one of the best ways for it to work is to actually make each panel and then once you've got each panel made then you put them together in the mosaic and it and it and it builds a much a much more a much better a much more sort of uh, stable uh, mosaic it runs much better and it's uh, it, it, it does yeah. a good job okay so once you've done the calibration you can see here Joe that it denotes what you've done so it says see hey next to so it's got bad pixel map and calibration so that means the file's been calibrated so if I call up that HA sub oh, okay. that we had earlier this is the linear before calibration okay and you can see you've got your starburst and anything else if right, I, yeah, if I click everything. here and say calibrated it will show me the same file but with the calibration files applied and you see nice. there it's got rid of all the amp glow yeah. and the starburst it's applied all, everything that that, that, that that was going to go on so you can jump between the two it hasn't made the actual changes you can see there's the linear and there's the calibrated and then cool. that goes with all. Wow, the, that's that's nice. Yeah, that's that goes with all tool. the stages. You've got the registered stage, the normalized as well. So it will show that for all of the different stages if you want to go through all of them. Okay, and but the nice thing is you've got this done. You, that does have to be done again. All I would do if I was really happy with that then is I would then go to the uh, integration tool and and do that. Um, there's uh, little changes you can make. This is where in the registration is where you'd put mosaics. If you've got different cameras and optics, if you've got the same target taken with two different cameras or different telescopes, you can blend them together. And we did, I did something like that with our flaming star and tadpole picture because I put your flaming right. star or my flaming star and tadpole and it put them together. Very clever. Um, and it, and it was, it and was you don't very have cool. to do anything, it does it all for you. So um, anyway, if I uh, just push integrate now, it will ask me what do I want to call it, and then I just say I want to call it Joe's monkey head because Joe's got a monkey head, <laughs> and now it's analysing the stars and it will work for all the different processes. So, but like you say, you can work your way through each stage. Uh, you know, uh, calibrate the files. Then I could have analysed the stars and seen the results. On the analyzing of the stars, yeah. it will then pick, uh, based on quality, a reference frame. And if you look here, can you see that one of, if I just click on that, um, you'll see that one of my frames is dark, this one here. See, it's got a dark band for mm -hmm. it. That's the reference frame. Yeah. So that's the frame okay. it's, it's chosen as its reference frame. And if I scroll across here, can you see it's got the word reference written next to it now? So oh, that's yeah. the reference frame that AstroPixel Processor has chosen, and it will have done that by looking at the, uh, it would have looked at the full uh, width half maximum of the star, the star shape, and it would have given everything a quality score. And you can see here you've got a quality score. And based on the quality so score of all good. the lights, yes, it's picked that as the best frame for the reference. So all the others will, will be referenced to that frame. Um, I find the auto reference frame works perfectly with this. So it's already, in the time we've just been talking, 
um, gone through the analyzer of the stars, registered all the frames, normalized the lights, and it's now integrating the files. So it'll put these all together now into three masters, one uh, HA, an oxygen, and an S2. Um, the masters come through, the, the masters are finished, Joe. That's the sulfur two. This is the oxygen three. And lastly, you've got your HA. I've got a bit of uh, artifacting around the outside there where it needs to be cropped in. But that would give me my 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 three masters. And nice. you've got different stretch parameters over here. I mean, they got like the maximum stretch, which that looks lovely, doesn't it? <laughs> so you get a bit of this light in many outside because it's the uh, Newtonian, the one hundred and thirty PDS. Mm -hmm. But um, once they're stacked okay. and you do your light Excuse pollution me. or your background, that all goes, all of that. So um, I never worry about that. So the light pollution removal tool in Astro Pixel Processor is, is magic. It's, it's amazing. It works so well um, cool. and does a, does a brilliant job. But that's how you stack in Astro Pixel Processor. And then what I, what I would most probably do with these is uh, save these as as fits files, well they are fits files anyway and I can take these directly into uh, PixInsight and then I've got the three files and then I can just use them as I would you know just masters like you did earlier and I would normally put these now into PixInsight and I would carry on my post processing from there and that's what I would do with these and if, um, if you're using Photoshop for instance would you do a little bit of editing in Astro Pixel Processor before you yeah, set the board uh, to Photoshop? Yeah, what I would do here is I would integrate them into one, uh, uh, into a color image. Then I would crop it, and then I would uh, apply uh, light pollution removal. So I hope that the video has been of some use for you. Hopefully it's answered some questions and showed you uh, how Astro Pixel Processor works. I really enjoy using that program. Um, I do, however, use PixInsight. I take my files from Astro Pixel Processor and I move them into PixInsight for final post processing. Sometimes, if I haven't got a lot of time, I'll use Photoshop. It all depends. So uh, I like to keep my hand in on as many programs as I can. Uh, it gives you uh, gives you a lot of options. But if you have any questions, please let me know. And I'd like to just wish you all clear skies and keep well.